So, today we'll be discussing a few common mistakes, actually 10 of them, which people generally do when they practice yoga postures. I am not saying that, that I am a perfect yoga practitioner or a yogi. I also commit a lot of mistakes. So kindly pardon me if it's hurting you that I am pointing out mistakes on other people. But believe you me, it's for the help. That I'll explain a few ways to make your postures better and more effective. So it'll help you for a better health, better alignment and better energy. What happens? Generally, people push too much in the, into the postures. And pushing too much actually takes the energy out. You can understand the definition of yoga, yoga asana, I mean, I mean, that is sthiram sukham asanam. So, you should be stable in the posture, it should be easy and then only it is called a yoga posture. So, you should know your limitation that what kind of push you can create when you are doing a posture. So, ideally whatever your limit is, go 5 or 10 percent more than that. Do not push too much. There would always be modifications in the posture, you can ask your teacher. So, ask a lot of questions from your teachers that if a posture is difficult for you and you need to do it the wrong way if you are doing it the wrong way then what is the modification for every posture there are beginners level there are intermediate level there are advanced levels also so your teacher is the best person to suggest you the right way to do a posture we'll be discussing 10 postures today in this video and i hope it will help you a lot generally people commit these mistakes because because they want to make their workout a little easier but making it easier takes the fruit out actually it takes all mostly all the benefits out so one should remember you should do it less you should do the beginners level if it's not happening the advanced way but the effect would be multiplied if you do it the right way and gradually when you practice it will go to the higher levels also one mistake generally people do that they if they are like doing a group class or something and they are coming late so they jump straight into the main routine avoiding the warm-up and sometimes if they are practicing on their own then also they tend to do warm-up just for the formalities so before starting yoga practice you should be warmed up from your head to toes every joint should be warmed up and mobilized before doing that. Warm up is very important, remember that. So let's go, let me explain all 10 mistakes
the first one is tree pose generally people if they are not able to balance they place the foot at the knee actually this way and then raise the hands up so what happens it creates a little extra pressure at the knee and it pushes it out so the ligament and cartilage there are chances to get it hurt actually the right way to do it is you need to place the foot up at your inner thigh push it out and inhaling gently raise the hands up keep looking forward at your eye level and keep the balance that's the right way and what happens sometimes that you are not able to take the foot upside so the safer way is to take the foot up at your thigh this way and then inhale to raise your hands up that's the right way to do the tree pose the second one second one is warrior one and the mistake generally people do is taking the knee forward than the ankle let me show you how do they do it the wrong way i am telling you it's like your shoulders chest and pelvic girdle should be facing forward that's the ideal one but what happens when a few people go forward so they push the knee forward so much and then raise the hands up so now right now the pressure comes close to patel patela the regular pressure is being generated here this area so what's the right way once again you if your like my left foot is forward so it should be a little at the left corner of the mat the right foot should be a little at the right corner of the mat i need to bend the leg make the gap accordingly so the knee remains above the ankle only that's the right way now there is no pressure at the knee turn the pelvis forward inhale raise the hands up keep looking forward that way you may bend it a little more so it comes above the ankle the back should be straight gazing at your eye level that's the right way of doing warrior 1 The third one is Padastasana. The people generally do the forward bending pose with a hunch at the back. How do they do it? They raise the hands up and go down this way. You can see a hunch happening at my back. So it will create a lot of pressure at my back. and there are chances that i may get the back pain the right way of doing it one should be standing straight squeezing the inner thighs heels together inhale raise feet parallel to each other inhale raise the hands up then going now flat with the back flat 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 and gently raise the palms close to the feet Then slowly, going again long with the vertebral column. Take your head down, close to the knees. Maybe a little down to the knees. That way. Look forward, inhaling. Come on. There are chances that you're not able to reach out down, that your hamstrings are not so flexible. So what would you do? You may take a stool or a block, like placing a foot, a stool or a block in front. Keep it around six inches away from the feet. Inhaling, raise the hands up, look up. Then exhaling, maintaining the flat back. Take the hands down here. and then gradually till you are able to maintain the flat back 
they're gonna head down. So don't compromise on the back. Slowly inhaling, come up. Roll the hands down. So that was Padhastasana. The fourth one. That would be downward facing dog. Or what we say, Parvatasan or mountain pose. People generally go into downward facing dog with a hunch, with a hunch back. Let me show you that how do they do it the wrong way. Like they go forward, down. That is the way that most of the people do down facing dog. Like if you see my back is almost round shaped. And they play safe. Like the gap between the feet and the palms is not so good. That's why it is a little easier way to do it, but that's ineffective. My hamstrings are not being stretched, my back is not being stretched, just a little pressure is there on my shoulder. So what is the right way to do it? So the gap should be a little more. And if I am not able to do it, then it's better to bend your knees a little. Then adjust your head forward and slowly stretch your back straight. Then slowly take your knees back and press your head down. Go long. You may hold, you may get a grip with the on the mat this way. And then go long, long with the head and press it down towards the ground. The back should be stretched out, the hamstrings are stretched now and the back is also stretched. The head should always be relaxed because a little extra blood is there inside the head so it's very relaxing. Breathing should be normal. And when you come forward, ideally, my foot should come between the palms and the knee above the ankle when I am coming forward. Gradually, slowly come forward and slowly raise yourself up. The fifth one would be Paschimottanasana. That is a sitting forward bending posture. The mistake generally people do that they keep the legs straight, that is fine. But when they go go forward, they again keep a hunch at the back. This way. Now I am getting too much pressure in middle and lower back. That's actually painful. And then what happens? They complain that after doing forward bending postures, they are getting back ache or something. So the right way is, back should be straight, stretch your arms completely and with straight back, go forward, forward, forward. You may do it that much, that is perfectly fine, like your back is straight, your hamstrings are stretched out and you are looking forward and you need to expand your chest, that is perfectly fine if you are not so flexible. Otherwise. You can push yourself the head forward towards the feet and gradually maintaining the straight back slowly slowly go forward forward you may even hold your feet pushing yourself forward try pressing your thighs down with the abdomen reach out reach out long with the back slowly gradually take your time do not push instantly like slowly gradually take three four breaths and the hamstrings will start getting relaxed there Slowly, slowly, take your time. Exhaling. Continue breathing for some time here. And then a little more forward. Breathe. Breathe deeper. Stay relaxed. The hamstrings would further be relaxed. And gradually go forward, forward, forward. And then take your head down. You may see my back is almost straight. 
go forward while while coming back expand your arms and go forward gently drop the hands down so the right way of doing paschimottan is the purpose is actually stretch the hamstrings and align the back if you do the forward bending postures the right way it's very healthy for the back i am telling you but what happens people with back problem they are a little stiff so they go down with a hunch back that is not advisable just maintain the straight back go as much as you can and one more thing if you are not able to do that much also just keep the hands at your knees and lean forward that is perfectly fine or the easier way uh, like a medium way is janu shirsha that's a little easier this way now again you can maintain a straight back what my point gradually your hamstrings will open up your back will also open and you'll be able to do paschimottanasana really well i hope i am making some sense the sixth one is half pigeon pose and the general mistake people do that instead of opening up the hip girdle they do it something else let me show you the wrong way of doing it like going into down facing dog first then come forward like taking the right foot close to the left palm and placing the knee down close to the right palm left knee also down flat with the left foot now what happens if they are not able to maintain the stretch coming here at the outer thigh so they sit down this way and they try to push themselves forward this way now what happens like instead of getting pressure here this area at the glutes i am getting no pressure actually somehow so the right way of doing it if i am not able to do it the proper way where should you do the mat modification like you can take the foot a little inside this way and then go reach out more i'll show you from the other angle also don't take the foot too much forward instead take the knee forward and sit this way so my hip is little up and like when i go forward and like press this thing down so the pressure comes to the glute so it will open up my hip girdle it will strengthen the glutes also so walking forward with the hands and slowly take the head down now i am pressing my abdomen also down so this area is being open up and if you want to do it the perfect way then foot and actually the front leg should be straight this way one straight line if you are able to do that that will be pretty perfect like pushing yourself forward and reaching out forward and take the head down doing it this way also my hip is still up so i am getting the perfect stretch it may happen that still after looking at the video you are not able to catch the crux so you can write it down in the comment section and ask so i'll reply you personally the seventh one is very common generally people hurt their wrist a lot and when they do it like when they do push ups when they do down facing dog when they do plank so to make it a little easier they tend to turn the palms outside and it creates a lot of pressure in the wrist and it really hurts it starts paining let me show you that how do they do it the wrong way do, doing it in the down facing dog or mountain pose 
like my palms are hair and i'm going into long facing dog this one now what happens to take the pressure off they tend to turn the palms outside this way so you can see that there is a good gap and then they press their head down so actually right now it's feeling a little easy but when when come out of the posture it will really create a lot of pain in my wrist so let me show you the right way of taking the pressure off from the wrist whenever you do a down facing dog or a plank pose or maybe push up so earlier when i was doing it wrong so the pressure was there at this area more and little on the thumb tip of the thumb so my palms were being turned out but what happens when you keep a good grip so these are five points like four fingers and thumb tips you should be pressing it down palm and the pressing the knuckle thumb knuckles inside the knuckles also in like these points the base of the thumb the base of the finger that should be pressed properly down and the center of the palm how this way keeping a good grip and pressing all fingertips down all knuckles down thumb knuckles and finger knuckles down and pressing the center also down so the right way of doing it it's a nice grip spread the fingers and press the fingertips and knuckles and the center of the palms down <laughs> so right now it feels so good a proper grip and especially when i do a plank pose a superb evenly divided pressure on both the wrist I hope that will take the pressure off from your wrist. I have made another video for the wrist like how to keep your wrist healthy by doing some basic exercises. So please go to my video section and watch that video also. The eighth mistake. The people generally makes the cobra pose ineffective. and they create a lot of pressure at the lower back so what is the right way of doing a cobra pose or upward facing dog you'll understand it more prominently how to do that like i am in a position of cobra pose so my palm should be just under the shoulder a little close to the rib cage actually and inhaling i need to come up so my knees are up right now and the palms are just under the shoulders so people to make it easier generally they pop their shoulders up this way so now i am getting lot pressure here and nothing at my back or somewhere some negative pressure is there at the lower back so right way i should be taking my shoulders up and expanding the chest and looking up that's the right way if i am not able to do it i am not so strong with the arms then i may drop the knees down and bend the elbow so let's go so that makes it a little easy you got that my shoulders should not be popping up so they should be down my chest should not be contracting so that should be expanded that's the right way of doing a cobra pose or a upward facing dog also the ninth one is how people make bridge pose or setu bandhasan or what we say kandharasan ineffective let me show you how they spoil the posture this is the way like your feet should be a little apart but in a lying down position you can keep the hands close to the feet or you may hold the ankles so the wrong way is just going up from the pelvis from the hip region this way so my both shoulders are down and my upper back is also down so both shoulder blades are resting down on the mat so where i am getting pressure 
a little on my quadriceps i mean upper thighs and very nominal at the upper back so what's the right way i should go down and after coming up i should go up from the chest actually then try holding the ankles if you are able to hold it fine otherwise you may keep it down between the palms also that is also right then push your shoulder blades in so come up on the shoulders the shoulder blades are up in the air right now i hope you are able to look at it right now i am getting very good stretch on the whole vertebral column That's right. We're doing it. Easy. Totally come down like this. The last and the tenth mistake. That is a headstand or sheet shasana. And what happens, especially for the beginners? fear is always there that i may fall down so or a uh, like tendency to do it quickly they stay in a hurry to go into the posture so that is the biggest mistake and that's why most of the people generally fall previously also i have made a video on headstand so you can click the i button and see the right way of doing a headstand and that video will take the fear out from you the fear of falling i have told the right way of falling when you do a headstand if you uh, like going to misbalance or imbalance so how to fall that is been explained in that video but for the beginners how do they do it they jump into the headstand and try doing it that's how they fall down quite easily the chances of getting imbalance is too much let me show you how they do it the wrong way i'll show you in a tripod head stand a tripod is your arms are away and your head is a little so how do how do they do it they go like this and they try jumping like this in the posture this way so the balance is not there sometimes they get the opportunity to do it the right way so jumping is not the solution obviously how to do it then the right way let me show you the right way also the right way is obviously the position of the palms was all right earlier also palms should be actually a forearm distance apart and your head should be a little forward so it's a proper triangle or a tripod i should say going like that for the beginners they can go forward shifting a weight a little on the head a little on the palms they can come in this posture then going up is very easy and there is other way also if you are a little strong with the core then you should go a little back go to the dolphin pose first and gradually raise the legs up that's very safe but it needs a little strength in the core let me show you that also i'll show you that in the other variation of headstand as your palms should be facing up again in the elbows there should be a gap of a forearm going down Half head down on the palms, half head down on the mat. Going this way, and gradually pulling the abdomen in. Slowly, I should be raising the legs up. Now there are almost no chance to fall down. The core should be pulled in. This should be stable. and remember to take a little rest after the headstand also makarasan is a good way to do it you can make a double fist keep it in down here and relax 
so your head is a little up so the blood which was being there in the heart in the head a little more has blood that will go down i tried my best to help you out to improve these stand postures if i did something wrong kindly comment and let me improve it i am also a human being after all so thank you for watching the video thank you for subscribing if you have not subscribed yet please go down and make the subscribe red button gray thank you so much